give 10 percent of our income to our church every year. Do you think that is the kind of person that is trying to hide things or do things? No. We've given all people need to know and understand about our financial situation and about how we live our life. And Romney was very interested in guarding husband Mitt's financial figures from the public in the last U.S. presidential election campaign. Just try doing that if you're a U.S. citizen or sharing a bank account with one here in Canada. A new American law set to kick in next year will demand Canadian banks hand over what in our country is private information on clients with an American connection. Washington wants to snare tax evaders, but a chorus of people in Canada say the wrong people will pay. This morning, our Project Money measures the panic and the anger over what's known as FATCA. And about a year ago, Hurricane Sandy unleashed its wrath. We looked out and it was torrent, torrent rain and you you drowned if you walked outside the door. Across the globe a year later, another churning, swirling mass of wind and water drove a path of death and destruction into the Philippines. In half an hour, we look at the anatomy of a storm, with the storm chaser who arrived in Tacloban hours before Haiyan hit, and with the climate scientist who is tracking extreme weather events with an eye to climate change. And novelist Erica Jong was blunt in her long-ago assessment on the folly of expecting a male birth control pill. Manhood is too delicate and fragile a flower to be impeded in any way. Whether a man is straight or gay, his penis is his god. In an hour, we're asking about the slow pace of research into contraceptives for men. I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. This is The Current. To register, check the box indicating you have been authorized by your financial institution to create a FATCA registration account on its behalf. Click the Create Account button. Well, as innocuous as that little clip may sound, it is helping to send many Americans living in Canada into a panic. Some are even ditching their passports. The informational video is put out by the U.S. Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, and it's about the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, what's known as FACTA. FATCA. It's U.S. legislation that requires financial institutions around the world to report financial details of any clients with American citizenship or other connections to the U.S. Representatives of the big five banks will be at meetings of the Canadian Institute today to and tomorrow to discuss how they plan to comply with FATCA as part of our project money and to explain why some Americans are renouncing U.S. citizenship. Over this, we have reached Allison Christians, who is the H. Heward Steichman Chair in Tax Law at McGill University in Montreal. She has consulted with the Federal Liberal Party on FATCA, and Alison Christians joins us from our Montreal studio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Well, I'm curious. Who are the people living in Canada who would be subject to FATCA? Well, uh, anyone who has U.S. status. So you call them Americans living in Canada. I call them Canadians with U.S. status. Uh, It's anyone who is considered a U.S. person under U.S. law. And the U.S. person is, uh, d- includes citizens, uh, people who were born in the U.S., uh, who have not revoked or renounced their citizenship. It includes people who have green cards. Uh, it includes people who spend too long in the U.S., which uh, implicates a lot of snowbirds up here in Canada. Okay. And um, what kind of, um, uh, what, where are they vulnerable? Uh, Well, you know, I think many people don't realize that they are U.S. persons uh, um, and they don't uh, they don't understand that they have a filing obligation, that they have paperwork obligations on an annual basis with respect to all of their financial affairs. Uh, So they're living their lives and then they are told or they hear from someone, oh, there's this new law. And they say, oh, well, what is that law? Well, it's for Americans who live abroad. Uh, They are required to file their taxes and pay every year. Uh, or even a, required to file taxes, even if they're not paying, right? They have yes, to file exactly. with the IRS, regardless. Exactly. They're required to file every year whether or not you pay taxes. And it, it turns out something like 80% of Americans who live abroad don't ultimately owe any taxes uh, because of uh, exemptions and credits and so on in the U.S. system that uh, they don't owe any taxes, but you still have a filing requirement. Failure to file incurs a penalty. Uh, and then your 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 ownership of accounts in your home country, what you consider your home country, is considered foreign to the U.S., and therefore you have a foreign or an offshore bank account. So what do the Americans want from the Canadian financial institutions? Well, they want them to scour their, uh, their accounts to find the Americans and let them know uh, who's hiding money in offshore bank accounts uh, in Canada. <laughs> or uh, who has money in, off- in the- Canadian accounts. 
anybody who is who has U.S. status, who has money in a Canadian account over a certain amount, the IRS wants to know about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds kind of onerous for yeah. Canadian financial institutions or even the government to right, do that. Right. Uh, but what, so what's in it for Canada? Uh, nothing. There's no. There's no. Uh, there's no quid pro quo here. Um, Canada is one of the few. Well, it's the only country in the world that, in fact, has what the uh, rest of the world aspires to, which is automatic information exchange with the United States. We have a tax treaty in place. The tax treaty says that Canada will collect information that's relevant to the U.S. tax authorities and issue and send it over. And the U.S. Is, uh, does that with respect to Canadians holding accounts in the, in the United States. They share information automatically. There's nothing in it for Canada. This law is not meant for Canada. We are a, we are a fallout. So, but if they're sharing information already, right? Uh, but doesn't this just fall under more information sharing? Uh, it's right, extensive more information sharing. What this is doing is shaking the tree, right? We're shaking the tree to get all those Americans who don't know that they're Americans who don't know about their filing. We want to get them out of the system. Um, or rather into the system. We want to get them out of from under a rock, if you like, to mix my metaphors. But so basically, if they if they find what, what are they going to do? Will they end up fining people who haven't filed taxes? Will they end up stopping them at the border? What will happen? Right. So I think that's what you sort of worry about. If you're if you're a Canadian living in Canada, and you learn about this FATCA, you say, well, what's going to happen to me? Well, if I do nothing, and I just hope for this to go away, then what will happen is that my bank will ultimately uh, give me a choice. Uh, well, we see that you're American based on whatever indicia we've been told to look for. You look like you might be American. Do you agree to share your information with the IRS? If no, I'm sorry, you can't have an account here anymore. We're closing your account. So you can either have your privacy here in Canada, your financial privacy, or you can have your bank account, but you can't have both. And uh, if you stay quiet and your your bank doesn't find you because your amounts of money are too low or for whatever reason the indicia don't pop you out, uh, yeah, I think you'd be worried that you went to the the border, go visit your family, go visit your grandparents, uh, and the uh, and the border guard uh, asks you, are you American? And you say yes, uh, and they say, where's your U.S. passport? And have you filed your taxes? And if not, you can't come in. But but now. <sighs> Why do the Canadian banks have to comply with this? Is this because they have business in the U.S.? Is that the connection? Right. I mean, I th it's really a, a well-written law. You know, if you look at the way it's written, uh, this is not about uh, volunteering. Uh, the U.S. has said, okay, anyone who's doing business in the United States, we have a right to know who you're doing business with. And so if you get income from U.S. sources and you do not file with us and you do not tell us what we want to know, then we uh, impose a 30 percent withholding tax on any in theory, on any dollar of U.S. source income that goes to you. So that, that is, that's a withholding tax they put on the banks for not giving right. the information? That's correct. So yeah. the banks will pass it on to the client? Oh, well, clearly. And not just to the American clients. Let's remember, this is going to be, we have to inspect every person that has an account in Canada, every single Canadian who has any kind of financial account. And let's be clear, this is not just for banks. If you have a trust, that's an account. If you have uh, a signing authority over a corporate uh, books, that's an account. All of that has to be reported. All of that has to be registered. But but now when, when someone opens an account in Canada, they mm -hmm. don't have to show up with their passport. They will now. Really? Right. Okay, so the Canadian banks are going along with this law. Well, they don't have a choice, and they're in a spot, right? They're in a tough spot because uh, Canada, as every country, including the United States, has laws that protect your, uh, your financial privacy against third parties. You don't have any financial privacy with respect to the, to the Canadian tax authority, but you do with respect to the rest of the world. So banks, when they receive your financial information, they do share it with the Canadian tax authority. They cannot share it with anyone else. And the U.S. is saying you must share it with us. That is why I say... Uh, that when the Canadian cu customer realizes that they have U.S. status, the bank will say, you need to waive your privacy rights so that we can give this information. Okay. So banks uh, don't have a choice. Alison Christians, we have to leave it there. Thanks yeah. for um, your um, explanation. My pleasure. Thank you. That is Alison Christians. She's a McGill University law professor. She specializes in tax law. She was in our Montreal studio. Now, Ruth Freeborn was born in Oklahoma. She came to Canada in the 80s. She's lived here ever since. She was a dual citizen for decades. When she heard how FATCA might affect her, she made some changes. Ruth Freeborn is in Kingston, Ontario. Good morning. Good morning, Ruth. 
Oops, we seem to have lost her. You're listening to The Current on CBC Radio 1 and on Sirius XM and online at cbc.ca slash The Current. I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. We're talking about this new law that comes into effect in July. It's called FATCA. And are you there now, Ruth? Hi. Uh, what did you do to avoid being targeted by FATCA? Um, I relinquished my U.S. citizenship. It wasn't so much about um, me being targeted. I don't have make the income in our family, but my Canadian spouse does. And um, he objected to having his <laughs> financial accounts um, turned over to a foreign country, the United States. So because you share bank accounts, his information would go to the yes. States, yes, to I the also IRS? Share, yes, and I share an account with our Canadian son as well, and this just became a little bit too intrusive and and onerous. Okay, so do, do you do you um have you been filing tax returns to the United States? I didn't I had been contacting them every year. I hadn't even met the requirement to have to file. You have to earn a certain level of income to be required to file. But I I double checked. I would always call them and every year they would say no, you still didn't meet the requirement to have to file. So it in my case it's not about I would never owe them any taxes or likely meet the requirement to have to file. It uh It's about protecting and I just privacy. Just violated our our <laughs> charter rights and uh, and your privacy and our privacy so uh, how easy or hard is it to relinquish a US citizenship well it's it's you know it's something that you have to carefully consider <laughs> um, but I think in this case I haven't lived there for 33 years I'm Canadian and I just couldn't I fit, felt like I was becoming a burden to my Canadian spouse and child. Um, if I were from any other country, this wouldn't be required of them. And so, I, you know, I have an obligation to my family first. But you, if you want to give up your citizenship, don't they do a check on you? If you have back taxes, you have to pay them. It's not a simple process. No, it's not really a simple process. You have to, um, you have to confirm that you're compliant for the past five years of taxes and six years of FBAR filings. And more than that, you were born in the States. What's it like to give that up on, a, on an emotional, personal level? Well, it's not something I expected to happen at, at 55 years of age. Um, I, you know, I have to inform my, I have a family down there, and I had to discuss this whole entire situation with them, which was in some cases not pleasant. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, for me personally, I, I feel more Canadian than I do American um, because I've lived most of my adult life here. But it's certainly, it's not something that I ever thought that would ever happen, that I would have to go this far. Um, mm. Ruth, thank you for telling us your story. Um, thank you for being interested. That's Ruth Freeborn. Uh, she was a dual Canadian-American citizen. She has renounced her U.S. citizenship uh, as of September. We reached her in Kingston, Ontario. Well, the Canadian Bankers Association also has concerns about the FATCA legislation, which is expected to come into effect next July. Marion Robel is the Canadian Bankers Association's Vice President of Policy and Operations, and he joins me now. Good morning. Good morning. Have you heard those stories before? Yes. What do you think? Well, um, FATCA is a, it's an example of a, of a piece of legislation that is extraterritorial in its impact. It creates a great deal of risk for financial institutions and their customers in Canada and in other jurisdictions. And what we have been doing as an industry is trying to manage that risk. Um, the first thing we've tried to do is to convince the Americans that FATCA is not a good piece of legislation. It does not achieve its, its objectives. It does not achieve them in an efficient and effective way. Um, that did not work. Because they're really looking for big-time tax the, evaders. They're, they're not lo looking for small fish, well, are they? Yeah, and, and they're looking for tax evaders in jurisdictions that are tax havens. Canada is not a tax haven. Um, as your previous guest noted, uh, most Americans living in Canada will probably pay higher personal income taxes here than they would in the United States, so they would not be subject to American tax uh, uh, tax payment. 
And so in terms of, uh, of, of increasing tax revenues in the United States, Canada is not a good target. They're not going to get it here. Nevertheless, it creates a huge compliance uh, burden on individuals and financial institutions, and it creates those kinds of uh, concerns that we just heard earlier. Well, so for a country to unilaterally create a law that allows, that forces companies in another country to do something, where they have you because you have you have bank branches, you have businesses in the U.S., am I right? Actually, That's the connection? Actually, it's much more than that. It's the fact that the financial markets and, and products are, are and, and the economy is very much integrated. So, so this is a result of globalization. It is very, so you have Canadians, for example, who have mutual funds that contain, say, American stocks or other sort, types of American securities that would be subject to withholding. Um, they have uh, mutual funds that might be managed in the United States. We have institutions that engage in some back office operations in the United States. They do capital markets operations in the United States. So that's so, their way in, and they so, would do 30% withholding. So the, And the withholding would be done either in the United States or by other institutions with which we have a, a relationship. So whether we have a direct relationship with financial markets in the United States or an indirect uh, relationship with financial markets in the United States, we are subject to risks associated with FATCA non-compliance. Uh, Rick Waugh, the former CEO of Scotia Bank, has said the bank has already spent a hundred million dollars in preparation for FATCA. Does that sound about right uh, for what does. banks are spending? It, it does. In terms of the large banks, that's that's about the ballpark. And yes. who's going to pay for that? Well, as with with all of these costs, uh, it's a cost of doing business. Um, it you know it can be paid for sometimes by the consumer of financial products. It could be paid for by the shareholder in terms of lower returns. There's a variety of ways in which that cost will be passed on, but Canadians will pay that cost. Peter Hogg, a constitutional expert, has been quoted as saying there are parts of FATCA that defy the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. Right. Uh, so again, you've been trying to fight this? Oh, we've been fighting FATCA from its, uh, its very start. Um, and again, as I said, one of the things we tried to do early on is convince the Americans that FATCA was not a good approach. Um, that did not work. The Americans were insistent on continuing with FATCA. We cannot avoid FATCA. We cannot pretend that it is not there. As I said, it's a matter of managing risk. Um, if we are not compliant with FATCA, there will be huge financial penalties, not just for financial institutions, but for their customers. What's the Canadian government doing to help? Well, what we, we've been working with the government to uh, develop an intergovernmental agreement um, that would provide a, a better way of compliance with FATCA um, to uh, share information, uh, Canadian, uh, the CRA with the, with the IRS. We think that's a better way of doing it. Can, Canadians should... Uh, provide information to Canadian institutions, Canadian authorities, and then we have these arrangements with other jurisdictions, in particular the United States, to share information. So uh, it, it, the, this comes in next July. Does yes. that mean if you open a bank account or if you have a bank account in this country in a Canadian bank, you're going to have to now prove to your bank that you're not an American or you don't have an American connection? They, they, or that you are an American? Like, are they going to go through every single client and no, ask the, questions? The, 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 the IGA is, uh, is a better way of, of providing that information to the United States. I think the, the, the way we're settling on it now through that kind of an agreement is not as intrusive as it might have been in a non-IGA environment. But how are you going to know with an intergovernmental agreement? How are you going to know they're going that to, information they're, they're, they're to pass on? They're going to look for indicia. Um, that would indicate that you are an American person. Okay. And uh, do, should people be worried about crossing the border, about getting stopped, about getting apprehended because uh, the IRS, uh, because of this change in the IRS laws? What happens at the border? What happens with the IRS? I'm not, uh, I'm not competent to answer that. Um, what we, we understand what the banking relationship is with our customers. We understand the risks associated with our customers and our institutions with respect to FATCA. And that is sort of the value add that we bring to the Canadian government in terms of its negotiations with the Americans. What do you think the U.S. would do if Canada tried to impose a law on its its uh, corporations the, like this. The United States is a much larger country than, than Canada. Uh, small You're smiling. Small, yeah. small countries uh, find it difficult to uh, impose extraterritorial 
um, laws on others. But FATCA, I, look, FATCA is a bad law. Having more bad laws like FATCA is not a good way to go. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Marion Robel is the Canadian Bankers Association's Vice President of Policy and Operations. He was with me in our Toronto studio. We did request an interview with the Finance Minister, Jim Flaherty. His office did not reply. If you have thoughts on what you're hearing this morning and on what you're hearing about this specific law, go to the website cbc.ca slash the current and click on the contact link or call us if you are confronted with this issue and are trying to make a decision about your citizenship or your bank accounts. The number is 1-877-287-7366. You can post on Facebook, facebook.com slash cbc the current. You can tweet us. We are at the current cbc. Now the news is next. But coming up, some scientists believe the winds of change are blowing. They're just going to blow harder and harder until superstorms such as Hurricane Sandy and Typhoon Haiyan are no longer so exceptional. We'll talk about that when we return. I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. This is The Current on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM 